Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, I'm going to continue work on the bold project that we have here, and we are going to create a character, and also we want to synchronize the animations with the movement, and also create a flipping direction mechanics. So this is what we are going to create here. And if we move here, as you can see, the player will uh, run around, and we can also jump, and it will play the jump animation. Okay, so let's start work on the tutorial. But before we jump into the tutorials, if you want to learn how to create a game from scratch to a complete game, check out my online Unity courses. I've published a couple of courses covering best practices in game development with topics ranging from programming to visual tuning, desktop to a mobile platform, object-oriented programming, and many other useful tips. With the price of a takeaway, you'll get lifetime access to the course. Link in the description below. Okay, now let's add a visual character and create the animation for it. So here in the project, I've already import a character, a temple run character, and you can download it from this site here, from the game art to this site, and I'll put the link in the description. So back in Unity, we have this lot of uh, PNG files for the character. So I'm going to pick the first idol and I'm going to drag the first idol to be the child of the circle game object here. And now we have this character and as you can see, it is very big. So we need to adjust this. But first, I'm going to rename the circle game object to be called player. And for the child object, I'm going to change the name to visual. Okay, so another thing that we need to change is we need to select all of the sprite here. So from this first one up to the last one here and we can change the pixel per unit size so basically the image height is around 500 so with pixel per unit 100 uh, our object will be converted into a height of five unit as you can see here but i cannot see the grid for some reason so let me just check here yeah so as you can see the visual object have a height of five unit give or take and now we can just select all of the sprite assets here in the project folder and we can change the pixel per unit and I'm going to change this to around 250 so the bigger the pixel per unit it will means that our 2d object will be smaller in our world so I'm going to press apply now as you can see we have a smaller uh, sprite so I'm going to reset its position and here and then we can just select the player game object here and I'm going to remove the sprite renderer and also the circle collider. So I'm going to change the collider to a capsule collider. So I'm going to add a capsule collider 2D and I'm going to move the capsule collider to be above the variable here. Okay, so now I'm going to expand the capsule collider and I'm going to adjust the collider size. So I'm going to press this edit collider button I'm going to drag the bottom uh, controller here and also drag the side controller so it will be the width of our character and for the height I'm going to add a bit more height but not to the full extent of the sprites okay so I think this should work and the next thing that we want to create is the animation so I'm going to open the animation window here and if you haven't opened the animation window you can go to the window menu and then under the animation you can just open the animation window here and by selecting the visual game object I'm going to create a new clip so here I'm going to go to the assets folder and I'm going to go to the animator folder here and here I'm going to create the idle animation first so I'm going to type this idle and I'm going to drag all of the idle animation from the first frame to the last frame here and with all of the sprites selected I'm going to drag this to the animation window here and if we play this you see that we have idle animation but currently it's very fast so I'm going to change the samples to around 20 and this will determine the speed uh, of the animations uh, when playing the animation so I'm going to play this again and as you can see now we have a slower animation and the next thing that I want to do is I want to create a new clip and this one would be the run and for the run we can just select all of the run animation here okay so 
Now I'm going to drag all of the run frames into the animation window and also change the sample to around 20 and if we play this we have a very nice run animation. And the last one that we want to set up is the jump animation. So let's just create a new clip and let's just call this jump. And for the jump animation we can just select the first frame of the jump animation and up to the last frame of the jump animation. And now we can just drag this to the jump animation window. And I'm going to also change the samples to around 20 frames per second. And now we have this jump animation. Okay, so now if we go to the animator folder, I'm going to disable the loop option on the jump animation. So I'm going to select the jump clip here and disable the loop time here. And for the idle and the run, we want to keep the loop time options turned on. And now we need to set up the animator. So if we select the visual game object, we can open the window animator. And if you don't have the animator window open, you can just go to the window animation and then select the animator menu here and now as you can see we have three states automatically created when we've created the animation so i'm going to reorder this and i'm going to make this like a triangle and put the gem this uh, above here in the middle and now we need to create a couple of parameters so i'm first i'm going to create a parameter of float and this would be the speed and then I'm going to add a boolean parameter and this will be the is grounded. And we are going to use this parameter to define the state of the animation. So for the idle to run, we want to create a transition from idle to run and vice versa. And for the idle to run, uh, we want to disable the has exit time. And for the settings, I'm going to set the transition duration to 0.1 one second so it's very fast and for the condition i'm going to add a condition and i'm going to make sure that uh, we want to go from the idle to run when the speed is greater than to a very small value so it should be around 0 0.01 and i'm going to copy this uh, transition parameters and select the reverse transition from run to idle and we can just select the transition here and we can just paste both and it will paste the settings and also the condition and for the condition we want to change the greater to less than so we want to make sure that if the speed is less than 0.01 then we want to go back to the idle animation okay so now we have this setup the next thing that we need to set up is we need to create a transition from any state to the jump state so we can go to the jump state whether we are on the idle animation or on the run animation so I'm going to create a new transition and then select the jump and select the transition and this time I'm going to set the transition duration to also 0.1 and I want to also make sure that we've disabled the can transition to self so we can only transition one time to the jump and for the condition I'm going to add the is grounded uh, boolean here and I'm going to make sure that we want to go to the jump state whenever the is grounded boolean is set to false I'm going to set this to false here and I'm going to create a transition from the jump to idle here and let's just set up this very quick here we want to disable the has exit time and set the transition duration to 0.1 and for the condition we want to add two different condition so the first one we want to set if the is grounded uh, boolean is set to true then we want to go to the jump to the idle but we want to also make sure that uh, whenever we go to the idle we want to check if the speed is less than 0.01 so now we have this two condition I'm going to just uh, copy these transition parameters and then create another transition from jump to run and select the transition here and I'm going to paste both of the condition and settings and for the condition we want to change the speed to greater than 0.01 so basically we have two conditions and we can transition from the jump to idle or the jump to run depending on the speed. So now we have set up the animator, we can start work on the flow graph. So here as you can see this is our previous uh, flow graph and I'm going to reorder some of the things here so to make it easier to see and I'm going to group this so uh, basically I'm going to expand the update here 
and now we have this separated from the update i'm going to hold control and i'm going to drag on the empty area to create a group here and i'm going to rename the group to move and jump and we can also change the color here so if we select the group here we can pick the color from the graph inspector i'm, I'm going to change this to a blue color okay so now we have this setup here let's create the flow for setting the animations so first for transitioning from the idle and run we need to get the velocity of the player so i'm going to add a unit here and i'm going to type velocity and i'm going to pick the velocity from the rigid body to the get so i'm going to i want to get the velocity from the rigid body to d here and now uh, we can just drag the vector here and if we go to the vector sub menu here you see that we can extract the x value get so i'm going to use that and basically uh, the x can be positive and negative so i'm going to change this to absolute so we will always have a positive value using absolute formula here because basically we want to check if the speed is greater than 0.01 or if it is less than 0.01 and now we can just add a unit called set float and this is going to be from the animator class so i'm going to use this first one here but we need to add a reference to the animator component so in order to do that I'm going to select the player game object here and I'm going to add a new variable here on the inspector and let's just call this child animator and for the type we can just search for the animator class and for the value we want to drag the child game object so let's just drag the visual game object here to be the value of the child animator so now if we go to the object variables here you see we have access to the child animator I'm going to drag this so we can get the value and I'm going to pass the value to the self slot here. So the animator set float units will know which animator that we want to modify. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to connect this rigid body output control to this input control here. And for the name we want to modify the speed so I'm going to type speed with capital S as you can see and this name has to be the exact name as the one shown in the parameters here because we want to modify this float here and now we have make the x velocity to an absolute value we can just fit this value to this value here so uh, the value of our speed parameters will be driven uh, from the x velocity absolute value okay so now the next thing that we need to set up is we need to drive the is grounded uh, depending on the is grounded status of our flow here and as you can see here from the previous lesson we already defined the grounded variable using this super unit ground detection so we can just get the grounded variable to drive this value here and in order to do that I'm going to continue the flow here and I'm going to search for set boolean and pick the first one here and now uh, we need to also drag the get variable output here to the self slot so this animator will know which animator that we are going to modify here and for the name uh, we can just type the is grounded parameter name and for the value we can go to the graph value here and drag the grounded boolean so we can get its variable and we want to drive the value here Okay, so now we have set up the animator. Let's just group this. So I'm going to hold control and then create a group. And I'm going to call this animator flow. And let's change the group to a, a greenish color. So now if we go to the game view and test this, now as you can see if I go to the left and to the right we can play the animation but there is an issue I forgot to disable the rotation so uh, we can just go to the player game object and under the rigid body I'm going to increase the rotation and save the scene again and let's give it a try and now as you can see we can move and when we move the player will play the run animation if we stay then the player will uh, run the idle animation and if we jump it will play the jump animation 
and we can also use the touchscreen controller here and the animation will work as well okay another thing that we need to set up is we need to define the flip direction here so in order to do that i'm going to get the x value from the velocity so i'm going to select this two unit here and then hold ctrl d to duplicate this and put it side here and this time i'm not going to use absolute here but i'm going to check if the x value is equal to zero using the comparer and for the b uh, value i'm going to use a float literal and set this value to zero and here for the output i'm going to use a branch unit and i'm going to connect this branch to the animator set tool here so it gets executed by the update and then uh, i'm going to also compare the x value if it's greater than zero then i'm going to use a select units here and basically for the select unit i want to make sure if the a is greater than b or if the uh, comparison is true then i'm going to set the true value to a float literal of one so we want to set the x scale to 1 and if this falls it means that the a probably will be smaller than b then we want to set the float value here to negative 1 and this will modify the x uh, value of the scale of our player here and in order to do that uh, we can just go to the vaults here and we want to create a new vector here so i'm going to type new vector and let's just pick the new vector 3xyz here and here basically we can fit the x value but for the y and z value i'm going to set this to 1 so we don't change uh, the y and z value but we want to modify the x value based on the select output here so if the speed is greater than 0 as you can see it will pick this first float and if it's false then it will pick this second float here so the x will have a possibility of values between 1 and negative 1 and here for the equal comparison we want to make sure that we only change the scale whenever uh, the a is not equal than 0 or the speed is not equal than 0 so when the branch is false so if it's true then we don't want to do anything and if it's false it will set the vector here and after we are setting the vector we can just use the transform dot uh, scale let's just search for scale and yeah here we have transform dot local scale and now we want to also feed the vector resulting uh, from this vector three new units to this scale here so uh, the player scale will change depending on the value of the a if it's greater than zero then it will be one and if it's less than zero it will be negative one and now we have set up this here let's just slightly tidy up the flow here and let's just group this by holding control again and then drag on the empty area and we can just call this flip directions and i'm going to set the color to around uh, reddish color so save the seed and now let's give it a try okay so if i move to the right as you can see it face right but if i move to the left now the character face to the left okay so yeah that is basically how we create an animations uh, mechanics in bolt and also flipping direction in mechanics i will put the flow assets in the link in the description so you can download it and test it on your project and i hope you find this tutorial useful and if you enjoy this video hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more unity tutorials with shishar playmaker and bold thanks a lot for watching and see you on the next video